Hey, it's Joe Glines. In this video, I'm going to talk through some of the differences between web scraping and API calls and why you'd use one over the other. Um, so what I have right now is I have Chrome running here on the left and Fiddler, which monitors my network traffic over here on the right. Um, you just saw a couple API calls from some other things that are running right now. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. And, and so the first thing to clarify is that um, a browser call technically is an API call. In fact, often it's like dozens of API calls. Um, right now, because I wanted, I, I haven't filtered my traffic. And so here you can see it's like going to Google and I think my Hangouts will show up here. I haven't applied filters because often a given website, when you hit a, a browser page, it will load other things like Facebook and LinkedIn and, and whatnot. And that's one of the things I actually wanna explain of why you might prefer figuring out how to use APIs over web browsing, because the amount of volume in a, in a web page load often is like at least a meg or so, and an API call is usually like one one hundredth of the, the file size. I mean, it's tiny and you can get the data structure and everything. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna clear this. Um, after we do this, I'll, I'll do some filters so we don't see all the different traffic here. But um, let's say I'm gonna search for a BMW and I don't know what's what. So anyway, um, all right, hold on. So clear it, now I'm gonna run it. And here, it looks like initially there were at least six calls. Um, and, oh, and look, in these two, like, to, again, two, well, actually four, one, two, three, four, were going to Facebook. I don't know what this auto dvdeapi.com is. Um, I think my guess would be that's probably, yeah, here's my Dropbox stuff, which, right, we don't care about that. But you get an idea, like, these first ones um, down through, where was it? Like, right in here? I, no, right before that. So these six were um, all from that search and look at the file size, right? So this is all the file size for each one of those. Um, and only one of them, this Carfax one is probably the actual one that had the car info in it. So for now, let's just, let's hide Chrome and let's just focus on Fiddler and let's focus on this one request. So I'm gonna click here and then we're gonna look at, so here is, Here's the actual API call and here I can, I get a good idea, right? First thing to me, all right, when I'm doing this is I look at the file size quickly and say, hey, did one of these have a lot of data in it? Um, it's important to know if it's a get or post request, but um, that's in other videos we, we have talked about that. But basically the, um, it, this next one here, the URL, look, this, this is saying API, right? And not only that, it's saying API, um, slash vehicles, question mark zip equals, hey, I'm like, hey, this is the query that really that I want, um, and I don't have to do all these other ones, or I might not have to, um, chances are I can break it out, but at the beginning, I'm like, this is the one I wanna focus on, right? All these other ones are superfluous, they're, they're not needed. And if I can programmatically, you know, grab this, then I don't have to, one is I don't have to automate the web page, but two is I can crank out these queries. Um, now, granted, I see there's a lot of cookies here, uh, but let me, let me change this to web forms view. It's nice, because I can see it breaks down basically your URL and the key value pairs in those, so, the first one's a question mark and there's a zip equals 750, right? So here's zip in value, right? So that's basically the URL being broken out. So you can see the parameters getting passed to it. Um, and and one quick easy way I like about Fiddler is I can say, hey, you know, that's, that's interesting. I'm gonna take this API call and I'm gonna drop it into Composer. Um, and then I'm gonna look at the raw. And for some reason, it seems like that didn't get brought in. Come on, Composer. Why is it not? There we go. Okay. Um, and let's see, parsed or raw, it doesn't matter. Um, but I'm going to, let's do parsed. Here we go. And notice here's the URL, right? Let's move this over a little more so we can see it. Um, first thing I would do is say, all right, I'm going to clear my data. And actually, let's go ahead and turn on my filter so I don't have all the extraneous other traffic, which is still possibly happening because... Chrome is open and Zoom's open and Dropbox is open. So in here, I'm gonna apply fi uh, filters, use filters. And notice right here, I say, show only if URL contains carfax.com. So that's gonna help it clean up the traffic so it's easier for me to focus on what I'm looking at, what I wanna know. So let's go back into Composer. I'm gonna clear all this out. I probably should have left that first one, but that's fine. Um, and I first I'm gonna do is just execute this. And now, notice this didn't say Chrome, it says um, Fiddler, right? And I can take a look and see, let's go back to in, because I'll just double click it and I'll pull it back to the inspector, um, and see if, especially here in the JSON, so here is listings, right? And here are 
wow, look, here are the, the different listing, the data, basically the data I'd want that'd be in that web page, right? So first I just demonstrated that like, you know, I don't even need, you know, I might still have to pass cookies to it, right? I haven't established that yet because this relied on the cookies that were in my Chrome browser. But I can come back in here and say, let's go back to this composer and say, actually, you know, I could, I could strip out the cookie if I want. But the first thing I'm going to do, just for fun, is say, what if I change this to a different zip code, right? 75019, let's do, um, I think 36065, I think, no, that's something close where I used to live in Athens, I can't quite remember. Um, but let's, and then let's go ahead and execute it. And let's see, now it still came back at 200, which means it's a, it's, it was a good result. I can look at it, I could double click here, and now look at the, let's just look at the JSON, um, Somewhere in here, actually, sorry, let's see, raw first. This is gonna be all the data, which actually I probably don't wanna look at. Yeah, it's too much. Um, but let's look at the headers and we'll see what was passed. So it set the cookie, blah, 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 miscellaneous. I thought somewhere in here I would see in the headers, I thought I would see the, uh, oh, that's the return. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Um, notice here, so, oh, oh and I, I could have changed that to uh, a bigger distance if I wanted to, and of course, this is where if you don't have the documentation about the API, you're not sure what you can and can't change, right? But notice it says 36065, right? And so it returned vehicles within 50 miles of that zip code. Or what if I wanted to alternate like the different models for the, the model three, right? 320 or whatever, right? I could programmatically, instead of manipulating my, my browser to do all the stuff, I can write a script and auto hotkey to just automatically tweak these and then go and get these results. And the file size is just nothing compared to all the other junk. And also usually they're very fast. The structure that comes back, this this JSON, now this is parsing it so it's prettier to look at, but um, you can easily parse that in auto hotkey and, and very quickly get, hey, I just want all the prices, right? And go pull that out and segregate it, maybe get the prices location or whatever you want, right? Um, not all API calls, um, not all web browsers return necessarily, they are a technically an API call, but they don't return JSON or XML um, data structure. So you can always look in here, because it's great if it is. If not, you can look in the raw, and often it's just built in the HTML, and then you can you can load that in the DOM and parse that too, right? It, it's okay. But um, hopefully you're getting the hang of like, wow, you know, I, I don't have to, if I have a lot of queries, let's say hundreds or thousands of things I want to query, Manipulating a web page, waiting for that web page to load. It's a lot of work. And and if I could just build a script to automate and start changing like this radius or the zip code and say, I want to do this query across every zip code in the United States, right? How easy would that be to put it into a loop and say, let's change the zip codes um, and just pull this data and grab what I want. So let's go ahead here. Um, let's, let's look at the, I thought I could view, where is it from here? Maybe it's in the raw. Yeah, I can view this in Notepad, which it's funny because it opens in Site because Site's my default editor. Um, here is the endpoint along with the query parameters, right? I'm going to grab the whole thing. Um, it's one of the things I don't like is I, they throw this HTTP slash 1.1 or whatever at the end in the get in front. I wish that was separate, but it's fine. So I'm going to grab that. Um, and I've, I, I, I did a little pre-work on this one. Um, so let's come in here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna set that as the endpoint, right? And I'm gonna include for now the, the um, key value pairs, the zip equals 3605, right? I just wanna test if I run this, um, let me save it and rerun it. Rerun it. Um, and so basically, so real quickly here, and, and we have, I have a lot of tutorial, tutorials on APIs. Um, so I'm not gonna get the nitty gritty of it, but I'll, at a high level, um, I'm correcting to the com object here. This is basically creating an HTTP object um, stored here. Then I say open and it's a get call. It's important. Always remember this is uppercase, whether it's a get, a post, or there's some other ones. Um, here I'm saying go to the endpoint um, and append the query string, which I don't have right now. So that'll be blank. We don't have to worry about that for right now. If you want to see your traffic in Fiddler, um, you have to add this. Uh, actually, you have to add the next line, but I just say, hey, only set this if Fiddler is actually visible. So if Fiddler wasn't running, it it wouldn't break it. Um, again, I'm sending a get request. And so if it was a post request, I'd have a value here with the payload, but um, don't worry about that. Um, and basically then it takes the response and I store it in this variable, response data. Oh, and then it looks like um, I got to put it, I had that wrong here. So it's going to take, because I'm using 
um, Auto Hockey Studio, and there's this built-in debug window. It's going to take the results and dump it out here for me, right? So let me save this. Actually, I don't know why there's two things. Let me exit both. I don't know what these are, so let me exit both of those. I'm going to kick it off so it's running and hit my hotkey. And so, bam, it threw, it did my query, it threw the JSON string, and you get used to understanding the differences when you see a JSON versus an XML format. But it dumped my results here, right? And so, um, that's that's A. Now, let's say, um, and, and by the way here, um, this format JSON is a function I have in my library. Here's the URL. Um, I'll try to remember to put these in the description of this video, but just search for the forum for, um, for you know, pretty... I think it's called, yeah, format JSON, pretty, pretty print, something like that. And um, if you want to make it pretty, so instead of, let me clear this one out, and I'm going to first, so basically I'm passing that response data to that function, and I'm going to store it back into response, and then I'm going to send response to this output window, and you'll see the difference here. It makes it much easier to read and see the structure, right? So, wow, look at that. There was over 7,000 lines, right? And that's how darn fast it is. It's just amazing. Um, but it makes it much easier to kind of see the structure and the layout of the data and expands everything and makes it um, easy to look at. And so, and then there's the whole thing about how to parse JSON and get what you want. But basically you could easily say, give me, you know, give me all the states, give me the location and structure and data format that you want and grab just the pieces you want instead of trying to navigate the DOM and hope that things are identified. Um, this is by far so much easier. And at the same time, the data structure here rarely changes compared to a web page. They can change it pretty frequently, right? So, um, so let's have a little more fun. Um, that is, you know, getting stuff. And I show City Pelham, Alabama. Okay, so I was off, but um, it's giving uh, an area of of where it is, gives a name, address. So again, there's often there's information in the API that's not actually visible in the web page, which is another great advantage of using advantage of using the API. Um, and then I want to demonstrate one more thing. So. Let's take, let's take this URL. Actually, you know, I already have it in sight, right? Yeah. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to put it down here. Now I have a little hotkey I wrote. Um, I think it's alt D. No, it's not alt D. There it goes. Okay. Um, and basically all that did was it took that URL and it parsed it on the, the question mark in ampersands um, on new lines. And so so this is my endpoint, right? So I'm going to come back into here to the script and I'm going to change this to, uh, you know, I don't like getting rid of things entirely. So now here is my endpoint. And then um, I'm going to take each of these and let's, um, let's see here. I'm going to put them into a structure and actually I should just do some search replace um, let's do it at least for for the equal sign. So I'm going to replace every equal sign with that. Let me highlight these place in selection. So that just saved me a little bit of work. Um, and then I could do you know more sophisticated, and I could do multi-line typing and stuff, which um, it's easy when they're all lined up. It's easy in sight. In Studio, you have a lot of other options for this. But basically, I'm just I'm making a structure. Um, and that one's done. So now I'm going to put a comma here. Oh, I forgot. Let's let's get rid of all the, these tabs. Again, I should have done a search replace, but sometimes it's just faster to work through it, power through it. Come on. Hello. I don't see anything else here. But there we go. All right. So now I'm going to copy this. Come back over here. And that's what this, I'm going to duplicate it so we still have that one. But see how this was a key value pair with quotes surrounding it? So there's the double quote, Q, and then auto hotkey, and then a comma, and then format. Well, that's what I just did with our data, right? So I stuck it into basically an auto hotkey object with key value pairs. And so it says when it parses it, actually, you know what, let's do that. Um, I'm going to put message box query string now save reload and run what 14 uri there's something wrong with the uri decode i don't even know why it's calling that i don't know why it was calling that but um anyway um 
you can see it took it took this data and stuck it into the oh look there's no equal sign oh that's interesting um model equals and then the uri encoded the the values which is what it was supposed to do and um i don't know why that's weird um why that first one let me see if query string p going no that's right save reload and it's probably gonna give me the same error yeah do i have everything structured right ending ending that to that there's one that one that one did i oh there's somehow i missed a comma that one oh i missed a couple this is why he's gotta you know this is why the search replace honestly is a much better approach um all right so now okay so now it it parsed it all for me i have my question mark first one and then the I mean, the order doesn't matter in api calls with this which one goes first um the, the order of your key value pairs the question mark has to be the first one to tell your http protocol to say hey everything past here are some um, key value pairs i want you to, to parse for me and then the servers will react to it so the first one's a question mark and then it says hey dynamic radius is equal to true and then after that you use an ampersand and so make equals bmw model equals 320 series radius equals 50 you know and sort equals best zip code equals, right so now when i run this it's going to do the same query we did before but it's going to use this and this and what's really cool so let me run it just make sure everything oops i didn't save it save reload now it's going to parse that puts it on here great it worked the way we want we got let's let's see if the the number of lines change because now look i can easily just change this to um nine four nine four seven where i grew up and save reload and run and now i just did a query for where i grew up in novato california um and so actually well wow, it's cool it shows you here too so it gives you the latin launch also but um so you can see how easy it is to once you start breaking into reverse engineering an api how easy it is to say oh man i want to i want to do this on you know we would put that into a loop right and store the results um and just grab exactly what you want uh and it's just it's so much easier um the other thing just real quickly here since we're dealing with json data is uh there's this other json um class i use and for that you can load let me so let me get rid of the, the output window and i'm going to say um so this loads the response data into a json object which actually converts it to an auto hotkey object and then so i'm going to use maestrius uh message box function and his message box function looks at what's inside and says if it's an object parse it and display it as an object if it's you know a string then display it as a string and whatnot so i'm gonna save this reload it and run it and you're gonna see um here is the structure so it would basically be um json dot let me give it what's a good example here so let's do dealer used count right so if i did this um well, well I, you know i'll switch over to message box you know what no let's use his because his i can do multiple on one line so so first is json dot, you know what and that json is probably confusing this let's just do j okay so it's a little easier to understand what's what json's reference so j dot dealer new count and a comma will actually say now put the next thing in the next line so j j dot um enhanced count in enhanced count so i'm gonna save this reload it and run it and now so see them these these were still up here right in the object but notice i pulled exactly what i wanted um and if it was a a deeper oh i should let it run let me let me show actually i can show you right here right so where so those were in the root right those were way up way up here that's why they didn't have anything in front of them but if it was if i was getting um let's say this carfax id i would have to have done j dot listings dot dealer dot carfax id right and so it's just a dot notation and anyway again it makes it super easy to grab exactly what you want 
and they're lightning fast and um, again they don't change they are, they are so much easier to deal with than web scraping in a lot of ways now all right some of the drawbacks right is um a lot of apis will have oauth authentication that you need to in uh send with it this one there were no cookies and no authentication not, no nothing right it was super easy not all are like that um there are ways around it. If you're using your um, IE to at least start it, you can use a different, instead of the WinHTTP request, there's an like an XML something request. Don't confuse it with XML um, file format and stuff. It's just a different type of a com object. And it will borrow your credentials from your browser. And so that's a really super quick way that if you're only doing something for a one-off, like maybe this week I'm gonna do something uh, with this API and I don't have to have something long-term, Hey, it's a quick, easy approach. You just say, I'm going to log in with my browser and then I'm going to switch over to do an API calls um, with this other one that will leverage my browser cookies and browser authentication and everything else. Right. Um, if it, if you're not, I mean, it's still, you can set that up. You can, however, you know, often with, with true APIs, they'll have the OAuth authentication, how to work through it, how to set it up. Some of them I can solve in 30 seconds and some of them it's like three days. I mean, it, it varies. Um, there's no standard and it's it's frustrating, honestly. But in the long run, if you're gonna be doing it a lot, wow, it's um it's a great easy way. And the other one is using Fiddler. Uh, more often than not, I can, I'll read the documentation, but usually I'll just, I'll use my browser to look at the traffic that it's doing and then kind of reverse engineer how I created it and then look at how it's showing up in Fiddler and make sure it, 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 it matches it identically. But um, I hope that helps explain some of the differences between APIs and web scraping. And, um, you know, if you're doing something that's that you want in 20 minutes, often, you know, web browsers are great, right? I can scrape it. Um, I can get what I want. I don't, I'm not doing all these crazy queries. It's fine. Um, having said that, man, the second you see if there's some web traffic and you see it calling an API or you see structured JSON data, I'll take that any day over um, using COM on a, on a squirrely page with browsing and, having to refresh your page and hope you get it all. And the other cool thing with most APIs is you can paginate and say, you know, oh, if there's a max of 300, hey, get the first page, get the second page, get the third page and just crank through it versus the browser, right? Those page loads and every page load is, another, let's say, another meg. It's, it's a lot more work. So hope that helps. Cheers.